Okay, um, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the education track, in case you're not aware. Um, I'd like to welcome Joshua Lowe with us. He must be one of the uh, youngest presenters I think we've ever had here at uh, Python UK. Uh, he's going to talk to us about his amazing EduBlox system, uh, making the transition to Python easier. So a big round of applause please for Joshua. So hello, my name is Josh, and I am the creator of EduBlox and a 13-year-old Python developer. I'm also a PyTop Future Champion, a BT Young Pioneer finalist, and National Coding Week Rising Star, and as of yesterday, um, the John Pinner Award winner. Yes. <laughs> so what is EduBlox? So if you've never heard of it before, this is a quick summary of what it is. So EduBlox is a drag and drop version of Python 3. So it's an interface which allows you to drag blocks of Python code to build up Python programs. It's an easy way to learn the Python 3 syntax. So uh, Python is now being dropped to a younger age on the national curriculum. But uh, younger children find it hard because you've obviously got the capital letters in the right places and lots of syntax errors. It can be quite scary for beginners. It's also an educational tool for children, so um, it's being used in schools across the world and to fit in with that, it's also a platform for educators to use as well as te uh, children. So why do I create EduBlox? So I started out learning Python in 2015 and I found it quite hard, so I looked at Python and thought this is quite scary, but uh, as I've learned from other people, it's not as scary as I originally thought. So I'm sure you've all heard of Scratch before. Scratch is being used in primary schools to teach young children how to program. So in the top left hand corner we have Scratch. So this will set a variable to zero and then say hello. On the right hand side of the Scratch box you can see that's what you would type in Python. But there's no solution to bridge the gap. So kids are used to dragging blocks of code, but why don't we do the same for Python? So we've got Scratch, EduBlox, and Python 3, and it helps make the transition easier by having that bridge to make the transition. So how does it help people? So EduBlox has a Python code on the blocks. You can see it's got the indentation as well. And on the left-hand side, it is a simple Hello World while true program. So that is probably the first code that you will have ever typed in Python. And the bottom block image, even, uh, is a download Python uh, button. So this download Python button allows you to create a program in EduBlox and then download the .py file. And then you can run it in idle or a editor of your choice. There's also a Python view with syntax highlighting. So there is a button in the top right hand corner of the workspace. You click that and it will switch to a Python view so you can see the Python code that you've written. So as with all projects, um, resources for teachers and children to use is something that means a lot to me. So I always try and create um, high quality resources and they can all be found on the learn.edubox.org website so if you'd like to take a picture of that if you want to know where the resources are. So these resources are always being added to. I counted about 20 the other day and it's not only me creating the resources, it's other people and uh, they submit resources to the resource site as well. So how is EduBlox being used in schools? So it's been widely used in schools, so a variety of different examples here is uh, Mile Primary School, St. Mary Magdalene's in Preston. They've now got it on their school curriculum. Um, Nicholas Chamberlain School in um, Coventry, so that's where Python is originally from, if I got that right. And I forgot what school that is, but it's a school in Birmingham, and they use it in their Year 7 computing lessons. So on the left hand side, in the top, um, this was a teacher training session that was run uh, Exabytes, if you've ever heard of that. So that's run by Alan O'Donoghue, who started up the Raspberry Jams. And that teacher training session ran 
in Coventry as well. And then the bottom one is a, another picture of someone else who run a session at the same conference. And at the top is a school using it in America. So Asiablocks marketing wise has only been put out on Twitter and word of mouth and we've already reached about 60,000 people in the first year. So um, that's just a rough estimate, so there could be more uh, than that. And it's always being added to by the community, which I'll speak about later. Another addition to the resource site is lesson plans. So this was asked um, about quite a lot. And in conjunction with a trainee teacher called Claire Witcher, who is doing her BCS scholarship in Manchester, she has created a lesson plan and this actually got her to pass her um, interview to get on the course. So Edublocks is being used by trainee teachers um, as well as normal teachers as well. And this is available on the website. So it comes with a full lesson plan which um, is about six pages long and an accompanying PowerPoint which guides the students through. So you basically download the lesson plan and PowerPoint and off you go teaching your lesson. So this is the PowerPoint, so you've got the normal lesson objectives. Uh, so there's a traffic light system. So everyone should be able to do this. Most of you should be able to do this. And some of you should be able to do this. And it has explanation slides as well. So here is Minecraft explaining how we use the Minecraft API and Python. And there's also a range of different tasks and extensions as well. So what does Edublocks offer? So Edublocks offers a range of different libraries. Uh, we can see Python, so this includes a variety of basic Python functions, so like import time, print, variables, stuff like that. There's also GPIO Zero, who is created by the awesome Ben Nuttall from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, we've worked with Ben to uh, create a variety of different source sheets as well as adding the library in. There's Minecraft, because who doesn't love Minecraft? Um, so Minecraft, you've probably heard of it before, but it's a virtual 3D world which um, children play on, but as well on the Raspberry Pi, you can code it with Python. Um, Explore Hat, which is created by the wonderful Pimeroni, and we have co-founder Paul sat in the uh, seats over there. Um, so this is um, a motor control board with capacitive touch sensors, prototyping area, and buttons and lights and stuff like that. There's also Blink, which is a, is it APA 102 pixels? Yeah, so um, they are a easier to control version of NeoPixels. Um, there's also HTTP client, which is a more advanced library, which allows you to access websites. Uh, Sensat, so there's two of these in space, and um, they are running competitions, um, the Astropy competitions, and you can enter that now if you're in a school, and you can have your code run in space for 30 seconds. And then Sonic Pi, which is created <coughs> by Sam Allen. And Sonic Pi is a way to create music with code, but uh, he's also written a Minecraft, uh, not a Python API, which allows you to, um, oh, go back, which allows you to interface with Python and Sonic Pi to create music that way. So I'm going to show you a range of different examples on the screen here. So this is the basic menu, so this is the Azure Box interface. You can see that we're going into the toolbar at the side, and then Jive get into the workspace here. So that will import time, and then the next one will be while true. You can see that it also indents the code as well. And then the next one will be a print statement, so that will print hello Python. So it'll go back into the basic menu and get time block. And then hello world. So you can see how much quicker it is to create Python programs than if you're normally typing it. So it runs it and it comes up with a shell window here, which is also an interactive shell as well. So once the program has ended, 
If you um, had a define function in there, then you could call that function in the interactive shell afterwards. And then control C button there. The next example is GPIO zero. So here we have a breadboard, two wires going to a Raspberry Pi, which is off the camera, and then we have a LED. Now, if you're wondering why there's no resistor, it's because they are resistor LEDs with an inbuilt resistor. So we tend to use those in workshops, but we do explain that you need a resistor. So that's connected to pin 14. So this is, if I just stop the video. Oh, it's gone off. It actually shows you switching to Python view. So it will take the blocks and then translate that into Python. And then there's a button there which you can click on and it switch to the Python view. So you can see the pulsing LED there. The next one is Explorer Hat. Now, this is quite hard to see because I should have put a dot on it. Um, but we're importing the Explorer Hat menu and then dragging a motor block to turn motor one forward. So that is connected to motor one on the Explorer Hat. Switching to Python view and then the motor turns there. The next example is blinked. So these are the um, APA 102 lights. So we import the blink library and then set all the pixels to red. Now I had to turn the brightness down on this one because they are quite bright and the camera just turned off when I recorded it. Then we run that and you can see that the lights turn on in the corner there. Now the next one is Minecraft. So this is Minecraft Pi Edition. Now it's quite outdated but it does the job for what we need to do with code. So this will import the Minecraft library and then get Asialocks to connect to the Minecraft server and then print a message in the chat. So we type that in the box, go to Python view. Now you don't have to keep going to Python view, but it's a good educational thing to do that if you're learning Python. And then it will say hello world in the chat. The next one is Sonic Pi. So hopefully the speakers will work for this. So this is importing the Sonic Pi library and then playing a sample. Now you can do more complicated stuff as you can see in the resource sheets if you go to the website. This will just play one of the samples. This is Sonic Pi in the um, bottom right hand corner. And that will send a message to Sonic Pi and then play it. Now the next one is HTTP client. So put your hand up if you've ever used this before. Yeah, it's one person. So I'll explain what it is. Uh, so it's a library which um, can check if websites are up or down, um, so that's a simple thing that you can do with it. But I also created a weather station which got the uh, weather data in Preston, where I live, um, and then it changed the lights on the blink to um, blue or red. So blue was cold and red was hot. Obviously it was always blue. <laughs> <laughs> so here we can see that it pings the um, pipe on website and it checks if it's up. Now it's up when that was done, but whether it is now, I don't know. So um, this is the SenseApp menu. So this is the SenseApp there. And there's two of these in space, but the um, ones in space are in a special aluminium case. This will scroll a message. Now, it is a bit blurred because the camera that's filming that is a bit rubbish, but you should be able to make out what it says. So, it's scrolling something, but we can't make it out. So the next one is um, all our code is hosted on GitHub. So um, GitHub, if you've never used it before, is a way to open your code up to the community and then allow them to edit it or raise issues. So all of EduBlox is hosted on GitHub and then it's also hosted on our website for backup. So you can fork um, the repository 
work on your own code and then submit a pull request, or you can just um, or you can just simply raise an issue if you've got a problem or something that you need added. So uh, the, a lot of people have come to us and say, oh, I want this adding, and um, it normally takes us about three weeks to add that in, because obviously I've got school, and school gets in the way of my education. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one is the scratch layout. So you can see that this is the toolbar here, and then you drag it into the workspace. So it's quite similar to Scratch if you've ever used it before. Also the toolbar is exactly the same. So I should have actually put the Scratch 3 toolbar on because it looks identical to that. But this is the Scratch 2 toolbar and you can see that they'll be used to what it looks like and how to use it. There's also themes and samples. So with Arduino, um, there is a samples menu, and you simply go to the samples menu and then select a sample that you want to do. So um, I did a similar thing where I created a samples menu. So there's three samples at the minute, but what I'm hoping to do is to create a library of these um, from community-based examples. So you click select and it will load it up into your box as if you've done it yourself. But don't use it to cheat in class because that's the other thing. There's also the theme, so um, you saw in the video, if you just go back. So there's a normal theme there, so that's the default one, and then dark mode because that's the way all programs are going these days. So, because then you can work up later. <laughs> um, theme for samples. And um, any questions? Thank you, Josh, that was amazing. Uh, do we have some questions? Sure. Hi, yeah, uh, what runtime platforms, it, so target platforms, does it run on? So, uh, at the minute, uh, it's running on Raspberry Pis, but um, we're looking to do a version of PC as well, so getting it running on the uh, Raspbian X8, no, it's called Raspbian Pixel Desktop now, isn't it? Um, so, that is on the front of the Magpie, I think, two issues ago, and, um, working on a version for that, so that's nearly finished. And then we're going to look at Windows and Mac as well, so at the minute it's just Raspberry Pi. Okay, the person at the back there. Is this just you working on it? Because I've just pulled up the GitHub repository and it looks seriously impressive with the code anyway. <laughs> like you've got Docker files and everything running. <laughs> so um, there is two main developers, so me, so I do um, I started it off and then someone called Christelle helped me uh, with it as well. So we're working on it together. So okay, yes, so that's uh, still very impressive for yeah. two people. I, I could see this being a commercial product from some massive company that they've got thousands of people working on. Well done. <laughs> Do you edit code in the Python view or not? Uh, so, the way Azure Blocks works is it's written in, the blocks are written in JavaScript. So, um, someone posted a link um, that I'm currently looking at on GitHub of a way to edit in Python and then translate it into blocks. Um, so, that is something that I'm looking at, but it's quite a hard process to do because you're going from um, Python, but you've got to have all the blocks there it to translate into. So that is something that is being worked on, but I don't expect to see in the next two months. Yeah, the front right there. What happens when a student gets an error? So um, when people get an error, um, just go back to one of the videos and pause it. So an error would show up here, Okay, in the shell. Now, with it being blocks and just um, standard like um, field inputs that you input text into, uh, it's quite hard to get errors. But if you do get errors, it's quite a simple thing to fix because it does tell you which block to go to and just count down. So it's not 
obviously I haven't got an error example because um, I didn't think of putting one of those in. Yeah. <laughs> yep, the guy in the middle there. Yeah, thank you. Um, in, in school, what, what age are... Um... So, um, I've seen um, people age of seven using EduBox and Python. So, uh, I'd say about age of seven and more. Well, we've, just, we've just done a workshop next door, and most of the kids are around about seven, eight, nine years old. They're oh, all okay. currently really well with it, so... So, like, way before year seven, so... Yeah. yeah. And for our head? Are you intending to target Microbit? Uh, so I'm speaking with Nicholas Tolovey who writes MicroPython and we're looking at implementing this into the online Python editor to um, do something with that. So that's something that we're looking at at the moment. Yep, in the middle there. How, this is really cool, how easy would it be to add like a, a block that you can just type I can code into, is that something you've already got? Okay, so, um, so I go back on the wire. Go to GitHub. Uh, So if we go into the GitHub repository again, and then um, go into the Analytics. Now, and then continue on. And so, so I'll show you a basic block here. So. Uh, EdgeBlocks is made up of definitions and generators. So definitions are um, things that define the way it looks, and generators are the code which sends to it to Python. So if I load up a definition and somehow make this bigger, so we get import signal. <laughs> so this is uh, the import signal block. And you can see that it's quite easy to um, create a block here. So um, if you wanted to create your own block, then you'd go to the Blockly website, which it's based on. And um, it's, there's a template on there which you can copy and paste. And um, there is actually a block where you can type your own Python code into it. So uh, say you've got a piece of code which needs a um, line adding, but you don't know how to create a block. You can just type in that block and it will do that. So that's how you create blocks. So that defines what it looks like. And then the generators here, that, that's what it sends to Python then. So that's how blocks are made up. Okay, one last question uh, from the back there. Uh, are you planning to possibly turn this into a web service? Because I noticed it has to be installed locally on Raspberry Pi. Although uh, I think it may be easier all people use they can just open it in their web yeah. browser. So um, that is something that I've been wanting for a long time and that's probably going to happen when we look at the microbit stuff because obviously that has to be all online. So um, when we've done the online stuff with microbit I, I will then know how to do it with the original version. So that is something that will come in the future. Okay, now we'll be round of applause for John.